Coach Tofa. What's going on everybody, Coach Tofer here, and I cannot believe I'm making this video. I must have sat down four or five times over the last six months to make this thing, and I just could not get through it. One of the main reasons that I'm making this video is because I have someone in my life who pushed me to do this, that made me promise to do it. And I'm the kind of person that always keeps my promises, and it was something that I needed to do for my father, myself, for my friends and family, and for you, my loyal subscribers. I haven't posted much in the last year and a half, and I just want to thank you guys for sticking around. There's still 90,000 of you guys, and that means a lot to me. Lost about 8,000 subscribers, but in the big scheme of life, it's not that important. So to those of you who have stuck around, thank you very, very much. And to the person who pushed me to do this, thank you so much. Now this video is going to be in two parts. The first, obviously, I want to talk about my father. And second, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a channel update and let you know what's going on in my life and what you can expect to see and when you can expect to see it on this channel. And I have to say this, I would love to tell you the whole story. I would love to break this thing down and tell you the details about what happened to my father. But at this point, I can't. My attorneys have advised me to not get into specifics, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the best that I can and explain the situation the best that I can. And just know that there will come a time where I will tell my father's story, and it is beyond horrific. And it's not something that I would wish on my worst enemy, what my father had to go through. So with that being said... I've come to the hardest part of this video. Today is six months since my father passed away. November 23rd, 2016, the day before Thanksgiving. My father suffered horribly, horribly, horribly for almost an entire year through pain and procedures and surgeries and just his day to day that I don't think I would have been able to make it a single month through. I was there with my father when he died. I was holding his hand. And it was horrible and sad and peaceful at the same time because he was suffering so much and he's in a much better place now. He's no longer in pain. And I've got to tell you guys, to watch your father, your best friend, suffer every day and in spite of your best efforts, you can't help them is one of the most horrible feelings that you will ever experience your entire life. I was by my father's side for that entire year and I fought for him and, and I'm just glad that I was able to be there with him when he passed and that he wasn't alone. And on that note, if your mom's a nurse, if your sister's a nurse, your cousin, your grandma, whoever, go give him a big hug because nurses are the ones that make this stuff happen. Nurses are the ones that care and nurses are the ones who are there taking care of your family members. It's not the doctors. Doctors are great, but it's the nurses who deserve all the credit. And so to all the nurses who took care of my father and were there with him and listened to his corny and dirty jokes and took care of him and loved him, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And to all the nurses out there, thank you for what you do because I damn well know that it's not within me to do your job. And I think you all are absolutely amazing. Now, while I can't talk about specifics about what happened to my father just yet, I want to tell you that that man raised me right. It was yes sir, no sir, please, thank you. He was funny, he was cool, he was kind, he had the biggest heart, he would give you the shirt off of his back. And he was taken advantage of so many times in his life, and he just kept choosing to do the right thing to turn the other cheek. And I think that's where I got it from. And I like to think that I'm the man I am today because of him. Now, all of you listening may not have been as fortunate to have such a loving and caring and amazing father and and for that, I'm sorry that you'll never get to experience what I had with my father because he was truly an amazing man, and I miss him every single day. But he didn't want me to be sad. He didn't want my brother to be sad. The sick SOB told me if he could ever find a way to come back and mess with Mike and I, he would. <laughs> and I'm sure he's tried. But I know that he's at peace, and I know that he wants us to be happy, and I know that he wants us to move on with our lives. And before my dad passed, he made me promise two things that I would do a documentary and tell his story and help other people in the same situation that he was in. And the other one was to finish my next movie out in Los Angeles. There were also a few other things that he asked me, but those will stay between myself and my father. But even in his last words, he was still giving me advice and making me make him promises that now I absolutely have to fulfill. And I'm very thankful for that. Now, on to a funny side of this, if there can be one. <laughs> my dad loved TV and movies. He loved comedy. That's how I became a film producer. That's how I got involved in the entertainment industry was from the early love that my father gave my brother and I for this stuff. 
We shared so many one-liners from movies and TV shows, and one of my dad's favorite movies of all time was Talladega Night, starring Will Ferrell. He would constantly, constantly quote that. Before my dad passed away, we talked about urns and what he would want, and he just said, damn it, Chris, make it something with golf and make it funny. I want you to laugh every time you read it. And that right there is my father in a nutshell. So I actually want to read to you what my brother and I put on my dad's urn. Father, brother, golfer, and badass. Shake and bake. If you ain't first, you're last. Ricky Bobby. Now, I think that is absolutely hysterical, and I laugh and smile every time I read it. Now, I've actually had a couple of people get offended by what was on my dad's urn. And to those people, I say this. Go fuck yourself. It's what my dad wanted, and when I look at that urn, I don't get as sad because I just read that and remember who the man was. And life comes down to this. Live it the way you want it. Be who you want to be. Always try and be a good person, and always try and be a better person than you were the day before. And before my dad passed away, he also told me this. At the end of the day, son, it's all about love. Nothing else matters. Love is the most important thing. Never lose sight of that. And it's so easy for all of us in life to lose sight of that. It costs zero dollars and zero cents to be a decent person. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all flawed. We all have our regrets. But the only choice we really have is to learn from those mistakes and try and move forward in a positive way. And for me, when I go, I want to know that I had some kind of positive effect on the world in which I just left. And these were some of the things that my father and I talked about before he passed away. Now, once everything is settled and done, I will be doing a documentary about my father's story because it needs to be heard. And it's what happens to so many people all over this country all the time. And it's disgusting. And my father should be here today. But he's not. But from this tragedy, some good will come of it. And I promise my father that. Thank you all for listening to this. It's really hard for me to do, but it's also a bit cathartic. And I just want to say this, Dad, thank you for always supporting me. No matter how crazy my dreams were, you always believed in me and you always gave me the best advice. And there have been so many days lately in the six months since he has passed that I've needed him. The one good thing is, is that my dad was such a straight shooter that I'm like 95% certain about what he would say to me for any problem that I have. Damn it, Chris, you know what you need to do. Now just go out there and do it and quit being a pussy. <laughs> so that was my old man. Dad, I love you and I miss you. And I thank you for everything you've done for me in my life. Now for a channel update. For the 90,000 of you that have stuck around. I was so close to 100,000 subscribers when all this stuff happened. And at the end of the day, not getting that silver play button is not the end of the world. I'm so appreciative of all of you who have watched my videos, who enjoy my videos. I love getting the letters and tweets and messages about how I made your day better. That warms my heart. And my father was always a big fan of the Coach Topher channel. <laughs> he, he, he loved certain videos and would actually quote them constantly. And he made me promise to continue with this channel in one form or another. So because you all have been so loyal and awesome, I promise to have a new gun game video for you next week. And look, everyone, I have probably 120 videos just sitting on a hard drive, but I've just been so busy. And to be quite honest, the year of hell that I went through with my dad, I didn't feel like making videos. I didn't feel funny. I didn't want to sit down at my computer. And I've been editing for over a decade, so I was a little burnt out on it. And the last six months after my dad passed, with it being the day before Thanksgiving and Christmas, I've been through 10 kinds of hell after he's passed for a hundred different reasons. It has not been easy. But at the end of the day, I'm still here. I'm still gonna have fun with this channel. I'm still gonna put out video game videos. But right now, I need to focus on my next film. I'm getting ready to fly out to Los Angeles here in the next couple of months. I can't say too much about this other than the fact that I'm really excited and this could be the big break that I worked so hard for for so many years and my director friends out in LA were working hard and we've got a good game plan. Like I said, I'll still put out video game videos, but what you might see quite a bit of are some vlogs, especially if this movie gets fully funded. I can walk you guys through the whole process of how a movie gets made from start to finish and that might be something I'm going to do. I'm not 100% sure where the channel's going to go, but I know that I care and love all of you guys for sticking with me, and I'd like to continue the journey. I just don't know what capacity it's going to be in yet. But then again, I have so many hours of 
pissed off people who I just stabbed that I could put out a video a week for the next couple of years. So I promise you will continue to see that. And I may just pick the game back up when World War II comes out and we'll go from there. But I guess I just want to end this video by saying once again, Dad, I miss you and love you. And to all of my subscribers and viewers and the people who have supported me in my life, my friends and my family, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. So I have to end this commentary the way I end all their commentaries. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Skulls, bitch!